Former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer speaking to our own Brian Sullivan live from the Milken Conference in Beverly Hills. Brian, take it away. All right, Melissa, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, you've owned the Clippers, uh, ran Microsoft. You've done 100 million things. You've got the Ballmer Group. You're doing some great work for underprivileged kids. You're trying to clean up the government data. Well, we got to get into this interview because there's so much stuff you're going on. Steve, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. I do appreciate it. Before we get into some of the bigger tech stuff, I want to ask you about the work you are doing for kids, but also trying to clean up all the clutter and the data on government spending. We know government spending is large. As you've dug in using big data, what has shocked you about the state of the U.S. government? I think a few things. Number one, I think the rhetoric around who earns income and who pays taxes shocked me. I think there's a stronger contribution when you add in all taxes from lower income people. I have been shocked on the fact that it only takes $115,000 a year, uh, 117 to get in the top 20%, but 20% of people in this country make under $9,000 a year. I'm shocked by that. I'm shocked by the way health spending is going up and up, inflation adjusted, and yet at the same time, the average length of time that we live is flat. What are we spending the money for if we're not buying longer life? I'm shocked at the fact that education spend, because student yeah. is going way up, and yet because student-teacher ratios are coming down, and yet only a third of kids are proficient in math and reading at the eighth grade level. Just a few shockers for you. That's, that, that's a whole interview to itself. And how can people access this? USA Facts? USAFacts.org. You get an yeah. annual report. You get actually a 10K since we're on CNBC. Look at that. I don't want that. Step away with the 10K, Ballmer. Come on, man. This is CNBC. It, it is. And we'll, we'll look at that. With USAFacts.org, we'll, you know, we'll have people go to that. It's shocking. I've looked through it. it it's unbelievable. Uh, I want to shift gears if we can. Uh, your former industry, big tech, taken some heat. Tim Cook recently criticizing Mark Zuckerberg. Do you think we need more government regulation of big tech? Because I think I remember you guys fought it for a while at Microsoft. Oh, did we fight it. We fought for the freedom to innovate. Uh, and I think right now there are real issues that need to be debated and thought about. My concern is that a company like Facebook might under respond or the government might move to over regulate. And really thinking through, first, the business has to really think through what it can do. It needs to have an intelligent discussion with legislators, regulators, that's part of the game. And generally, it may take longer or shorter, a solution can be found. I wish we had found a solution faster in our antitrust matter, because certainty of what's possible really helps then companies go ahead and innovate, and yet companies are always saying, oh, you know, don't regulate yeah. us. And yet I think, uh, I think everybody has to participate in that discussion. Do you discussion. think Facebook or others will get more government regulation? Do you think the government is going to come in? I don't know. I think it'll depend on their response. You think if Tim Cook was right to criticize Zuckerberg? Uh, criticism between CEOs in the tech business largely has to do with somebody selling their business model and their approach yeah. versus somebody else. That's my experience. I used to do it myself, Brian. Yeah. Uh, so. I, I, I think you got to look Microsoft at it that way. Microsoft never got caught up in the data debate. You guys have, have largely remained outside of that. What, what is the value of our personal data? How much did you guys discuss it at Microsoft? We discussed it a lot, but we never really grew a business that was dependent on it. The size of the advertising business, we never really got there. We were trying. Uh, the company still doesn't have a large business that would be affected. But... LinkedIn. LinkedIn bought after I left. Wonderful company, glad to see it. What I would say is, first you have to understand how sensitive are your customers to these privacy issues. Facebook revenue and usage was up dramatically in the last quarter, and at the same time they were going through this whole well, privacy scandal debate. was toward the end, it was toward the was end towards of the, the end. Yeah. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. Let's see what happens. What do consumers think? What do investors think? What does government think? And what, what do does you the company think? do? What do I do? I don't, I'm not a big user of some of the most, um, the services that get the most attention. I'm not a big user of Facebook. I don't put that much of my personal information out on the internet. Hi, so, I'm worth 38 billion, here's where I live. Don't do that, by the way, don't do that. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that might be available. Here's what I think though, Steve. When I look at what you guys went through years and years ago, and I look at 
Google and Amazon. You could make the argument that Google, and I'm not picking on them, they're great companies, they employ tens of thousands of people. Google and Amazon, in some ways, are more powerful in their respective industries than you guys ever were when the government, especially Europe, tried to break you up. You can argue that, and I believe that. I still believe that the antitrust power of Google in Europe is out of control. Should I they be believe, broken up? How about broken up? I think they should be regulated to permit competition. I thought that when I worked at Microsoft, I still believe it. Microsoft's backed off from that. That's new, new leadership's perspective. But I absolutely think there's a problem, and the Europeans were on to an important, an appropriate form of regulation. I'm glad I'm not the only one that happens to Steve. Melissa Lee back at HQ where it's 20 degrees warmer than LA. Let's <laughs> jump in here, Mel. Ironically, thanks Brian and Steve. You know, I think the last time I had the privilege of, of speaking to you, I asked you pretty much the same question. That would be on Twitter. At one point in time, a few years back, you acquired about a 4% stake in the company when shares were north of $25. You may have dollar cost average here and there. Are, do you still hold on to every share that you owned? Are you selling? Uh, actually, Actually, I don't hold any of my you Twitter don't hold, shares hold anymore. Any, really? When did you sell? Except to the extent that they're represented in index funds. Uh, I sold at a good time, very good time. I sold uh, uh, right near the high. Right uh, near the recent high. Recent high. Why? Why did you sell? Yeah, thir uh, 33, 34, 35, right in there. I sold because, it, really, because I decided investing money is not my business. Uh, I'm in index funds. I'm in Microsoft. It keeps my life simpler. Uh, I think Twitter will will succeed, it will move forward, but I simplified my life and I got out at a, at a very nice price. All right, well I guess I'll stop asking you about Twitter now. <laughs> um, and one last quick question, Steve, and that is are you um, investing in any way, and I know you don't invest in stocks per se, but how do you feel about blockchain and cryptocurrencies? Well, look, the blockchain technology is a fantastic thing. Uh, cryptocurrencies, which happen to use blockchain, Maybe I'd say they're even too complicated for me to understand why they're, why they're really going to be valuable. Um, I have sons who will buy some, some cryptocurrency. You're not going to find me speculating in this stuff. Hi, Steve. It's Josh Brown. What's one piece of advice you would give, um, speaking of government overreach, probably at some point things will come to a head between the administration or some state AG and uh, Amazon? What's one piece of advice you maybe have given Jeff or would, given the battle that you'd fought a generation ago against something remotely similar, let's say, uh, to say the least? Yeah, the one thing I, I would say, and you know, it's gratuitous in the sense I'm not expert in their issues, is if you're going to have a problem, you're better off diving in, trying to solve it, and get it behind you sooner than later. I regret the fact that we didn't get to where we finally got earlier in the process. And I think going through the emotional, not us, we're good people thing, which they are. Uh, I feel good about the, Amazon as a, a company in that regard. But I think you can protest too much. And if there's an issue, try to resolve it up front. Do you think, Steve, they don't take enough responsibility in Silicon Valley for these big tech companies for what they do? I think they have kind of like, oh, we're just, you know, we're not a media platform, we're just letting people share. There, there's got to be a level of responsibility. I think they have the same problem we had. I'm a good company, I'm good people, I've done good stuff, my customers seem to like what I'm doing. And why would anybody change that? Because we're, we're changing the world, we're serving the world. And that makes it a little harder to, you know, not have uh, narrowness and, and better peripheral vision. And, and I get it. Yeah. I get the emotion of it. I get why people are proud of what they done, have done. Amazon's positively changed the world. Microsoft, Google. Yet, at the end of the day, there may need to be some, some ability to restrain, but the people who created these companies, they're just saying, hey, I've been positive. I've, I've made a difference in this world. They like me. They really like me. Could I have that, please, Steve? So guys, usafacts.org, if you need some scary stuff about government spending, They've done a great job, Balmer Group, doing some great work for underprivileged kids. Good luck with the Clippers. Our friend Tillman Fertitta, by the way, probably says hello. Hopes he, to see I you in the does. playoffs next year. No, hurt me, no, hurt that's, me. That's okay. Steve Balmer, real pleasure, sir. Thank Good you very you much, again. Brian. Thank you.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.